Well, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful day here on the 24th, Wednesday, the 24th of June, 2020. And we are now released from lockdown from coronavirus, or pretty well. The laws regarding coronavirus, whilst um, we generally operate UK-wide, they are devolved to the various nations. So in England for quite some time now, about three weeks after nine weeks of lockdown, we are able now to travel anywhere we like within the confines of England, that's not the UK, so we can't yet travel into Wales or Scotland or Northern Ireland from England. They still have some slightly different variations to our lockdown, but pretty well now we're able to get out and about as much as we like here in England and certainly myself and a few of my buddies have taken several opportunities to get ourselves out because the weather has been really really good for motorcycling and of course with still a, a flavour of lockdown happening meaning you can't stop away anywhere you can't stop in a hotel or anything it has meant that the roads generally have been pretty quiet although the volume is now starting to build we have also bought tents between us and the part of the reason for that is is it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to get many guest houses or hotels they have officially been allowed to open from a couple of weeks time on july the 4th but it's pretty obvious that the virus doesn't cope quite so well in the outdoors and it certainly doesn't cope so well in the warmer weather so we've all bought tents individual tents so not sharing any tents again to try and restrict the virus but it does mean now that we can at least get out on the motorcycles and maybe spend a weekend away and hopefully we may cover some of that on the channel in the future the sunday just gone was father's day i think it was father's day here in the uk and several other places around the world certainly in the us but i was very lucky that my girls bought me some more accessories or an accessory for my motorcycle both of these have come from nippy norman so um, no particular plug for them but those of you in the uk uh, who own bmws will very much have heard of nippy normans at nippynormans.com um, i've paid for these or at least my daughter's paid for one of them and i've paid for the other the other uh, accessory but what we're actually going to do is we're going to replace the DIN socket that sits on the inside the cockpit at the front of the uh, R1250 GS, in fact the 1200 as well. So if you look down riding the motorcycle down inside the fairing at the right hand side you'll see there that there's a DIN socket and quite honestly a DIN socket barring very very few accessories is pretty useless. Most will use either a cigarette type um, socket or USB sockets for charging various things like GoPro batteries or your phone or whatever else. So I actually have a, a an Optimate right angled attachment to go into there which has two USB sockets feeding off that DIN socket. Um, now what that means is is that I have to have that plugged in to be able to use it and I really only ever use it for USB. The only other time I use it is actually to charge the battery because I have again an Optimate 4 battery charger and that plugs in there too. Um, but obviously it's also part of the CAN bus system. So what we've actually got here is a, a Nippy Norman developed product which completely replaces that DIN socket with two USB sockets and we'll show you that in a second. Now I'm led to believe there's no cutting of wiring, it, it plugs it into the existing system, works itself out with the CAN bus and various other bits, it gets very good reviews. Again it's not cheap uh, I believe it's a present so I shouldn't really say this but I believe this was £34 um, on the Nippy Norman website my daughter's bought me that and we'll have a look at the unboxing in a moment but I did feel that once I took the DIN socket off it would still be quite nice to be able to retain the DIN socket in some way shape or form if only for me to be able to plug in my Optimate 4 charger now my Optimate 4 charger has a DIN socket and is CAN bus friendly but it does have the ability to be able to switch it to a standard charger that doesn't use the CAN bus signals um, and certainly I'll still be able to use the DIN socket but just directly to the battery meaning I don't have to remove the side panel or any of those other things so, so a no tool type of organization. The other thing as well is is of course I do still have the right angled USB adapter which would allow me to be able to charge more equipment and everything else. So what I've added to and in fact I've purchased to go with the purchase my my daughter's made is I purchased this um, US sorry um, a DIN socket bracket comes with a bracket and some wiring again with a 10 amp fuse in it and a, a BMW connector and that allows you to replace recite the DIN socket 
under the front seat, the, the, the passenger seat on the right hand side as you're sat on, the, sat on the bike. So we'll take a look at both of these as I sort of unbox them and then we'll get out on the bike and fit them. I don't anticipate it taking very long and I'm hoping it'll be pretty well plug and play. But you'll hopefully as well then be able to see that not only do I replace the DIN socket with full-time USB sockets, but I also move the DIN socket, the, the, the removed DIN socket, onto a bracket at the rear, which then gives me additional direct to battery, not switched or not controlled by the canvas um, outlet, so that I can use it for, well, all kinds of things, charging stuff while I'm camping, those types of, those types of things. I could even get a cigarette lighter adapter and blow up my airbed. Anyway, let's take a look. Okay, so here's the two packages here. This is the uh, USB socket that replaces the DIN plug and this is the bracket that moves the DIN plug to under the seat. So we're going to do this one first. As I say, this is the one my daughter's bought. It was 34 quid, I believe, from Nippy Normans. This one, the bracket was 20 quid from Nippy Normans. But let's just take this one out of the way for a second and we'll move on to this one. So there's a picture of the outside of the box. So you may well be able to pick up all the information from there and then if we open the box it's a very simple unit there it is just there and here are the instructions I don't think we'll necessarily need the instructions but we'll take them out just the same and a, and a spanner so that's the unit the spanner and the instructions so the instructions are a couple of pages the important thing to remember with this is that fitting it to the 1250 as we're going to do all the 1200 this is the standard BMW connector that'll just clip onto here this is the locking nut which we'll see comes off very similar to the DIN nut and then this piece here is not actually used that piece is purely for the smaller GS's and the K1600 so the F800, the F700, the F650 uh, the K1600 so we won't actually be using that um, but we'll basically be holding the thing on with the unit and tightening up with the spanner that's supplied now if we look at this it's got two connections so labeled number one and number two now the important thing to remember is there is that they are different powered ports because this has all of the electronics in it to operate on the CAN bus system on the bike um, it also has um, a transfer of the load so effectively I think it's probably or it's somewhere in the region of four amps that the current DIN socket can actually power so what they've done is split this up into a 2.3 master socket here 2.3 amp and that will do things like it'll charge an iPhone or it'll charge an iPad it'll also charge obviously everything else Android mobile phones that type of thing but importantly on this side we have an auxiliary one amp socket so this one will operate as a slow charger so for instance android smart phones have a a slow charge gopro uh, single battery chargers will quite happily charge this side but we just need to remember that they are different 2.3 amp on the left hand side the number one socket and one amp on the auxiliary side the number two socket so that's what we're going to be fitting in a little later so we'll just move that to one side bringing in now the other piece which is when we've removed the DIN socket that the USB is going to replace we're going to take that actual socket and we're going to move that backwards under the seat so again this just has a simple staple removal and in the bag we have the following components so if we look at this in detail again pretty good instructions unlike necessarily the Wunderlich which um, Nippy Normans are the UK distributor of um, it does give very good detail but I'm a guy so we don't read instructions um, here is the the bracket now this bracket will go on to uh, the bolt that holds the tray the electronics tray under the front seat uh, on the right hand side meaning that this will now be pointing towards the rear of the vehicle so the rear of the motorcycle so i think it'll be somewhere near the the side projections of my mud sling and then here is the actual piece that does all the 
electric wizardry, or not that it does much electric wizardry. Here you have the connection, the red positive connection to the battery, and here you have the black negative connection to the battery. And because you're taking this directly from the battery, it needs to have a fuse on it, otherwise you could overload it to the size of the wiring. Now these are fairly lightweight wiring, and so we have this inline fuse, which is very, very well put together. It's even got a rubber waterproof seal in here. So if we actually just pull that off and part it, there we can see inside it's got a, a 10 amp blade fuse like so, which we'll put back in, and then that just caps back on, and as you can see, it's got a waterproof seal on here, so that pushes up and clips into place, and we've got a screw hole here should we need to. We, we may not end up screwing that in, but at least it is fused. So battery, battery, fuse, and then this end has the magical BMW socket on the end, which we can demonstrate here because it should plug into the exact same one as the uh, socket here so there we go and you can see it simply just clips in so we should have absolutely no changes to the BMW wiring by fitting either of these two accessories. So there's the unboxing let's get to the bike. Right so here we are out on the bike here's the uh, offending din socket, not offending at all of course, but it uh, it has a flap here and the adapter that I normally use is plugged into there. You can see by these shots that I've taken earlier that there's a, a nut underneath which we've got to undo and a connector, but first of all you'll notice too that there's a cable tie, we're going to need to cut that cable tie and remove the socket and then we'll undo it and replace it. Okay, so first off we're going to use the side cutters and get those down in there to cut said cable tie so that was holding the wire and this cable here all together so we'll make sure that we put a similar one back when we come to do it. The DIN socket here is in a little locating lug so it won't actually turn as we undo it but what we'll now do is using the spanner we were supplied with with the replacement, we will slacken that off. There we go. So now whizzing the nut backwards down, which allows me to relieve the DIN socket from its connection. So as we can see now, that's the DIN socket itself actually free from it. You can see here the locating lug, which we'll be using on the other one. And hopefully, with a little bit of jiggery-pokery, we can release this connection, which has a little lever on it. There we go. So this is the connection removed. So the DIN socket is now out. And we're left here with the, with the socket, the plug that it's going to go into with the new one. So we'll get the new one and slot that back on. So here's the new connection, which is going to go here with the two caps, number one and number two, both with waterproof covers, so we'll cover those over, one and two. We know it needs to go that way because if we can see here, hopefully, there's a little lug here, and that lug needs to locate with the, the bracket there, has a little square lug out of it, so hopefully we'll be able to find that when we come to do it. So let's back the wire off now, the cable out. Let's put this through and just make sure by giving it a little twiddle there that it is located and then with a little bit of luck we'll be able to get the nut on fairly easily. Make sure you don't cross thread it and of course make sure you don't do it up too tight because we are effectively working with a steel nut and plastic housing so we certainly don't want to overdo it and what I would normally do with that is using the spanner that I've got hold it right up here so you actually can't get too much leverage on it so just making sure that that's in its lug which it is and a little bit of juggling I haven't yet dropped it which is something of a marvel as I say I will 
There we go, we're on it now. So holding it right up, oh, it fell off, right up by the spanner, just so that it's pinched and that then is perfectly okay. Then we've got to find the cable. And again, excusing my head. Move it down to the bottom and it should locate itself in. It will only go in one way, that way, and you'll hear it, hopefully, click into place. Maybe you couldn't hear it, but I could certainly feel it. So that's now in place and we are good to go. I just need now to replace the small cable tie, which may be a little bit difficult to do while you're watching, but um, I will get that on there now and make sure that that other cable is is attached so that it's all back exactly as it came out. So here we've got the two waterproof connections over, so number one and number two. The most powerful one is nearest to the nearest to the middle and this lower powered one is on the outside, but nicely fitted or connected with the CAN bus connections. So pretty well an ideal fitment and very easy to do. Okay, so we're now gonna fit the bracket, which is gonna fit into this void here. To do that, we've got to remove the passenger seat and the rider's seat. So first off, take the passenger seat off, then the rider's seat off. And hopefully you can see this in shot, but we're actually going to remove this uh, bolt here, which is a Torx 30 bolt, and that's where the bracket is going to hang from. Um, you can see all my cables here for the CanSmart unit running through so here. There Just we have it. That's the bolt removed on the right hand side of the electronics tray here and the piece is going to fit into this void. Just something that I would point out to some people which they may not have noticed here is the little chip for the pro riding modes, this red chip here. Some of you will have paid for pro riding modes and the BMW dealerships seem not to enable them by default. You should find if you've paid for it, not if you haven't paid for it, but if you've paid for it, you'll find this little red chip in a plastic bag underneath the seat with the toolkit. Um, and I think the reason they don't put it in from start is because you're supposed to be running in the machine, but quite often at first service, they forget to put it in and plug it. It's, it literally is plug and play. If you've got one under your seat in a little plastic bag, a little red plug, plug it into that unit there, you'll get your pro modes, which you'll then see on the TFT screen. I found a lot of people that ha actually have them and haven't plugged them in, so a uh, little bit of a free service there. So anyway, we're now gonna make up the bracket that holds the DIN plug. Okay, so I've cleaned out the compartment and I've cleaned the battery. Little reminder to myself, I just disconnected the battery without disengaging my tracker. Um, so in the meantime, I've just had a phone call from the tracker company asking if I've got my bike with me. So I uh, had to confirm some details there. Um, but I suppose deep down, it's good to know that, um, good to know the tracker works. Anyway, here's the part we're now gonna fit. Obviously, positive will go to the back of the battery here. The negative will go to this end of the battery. We're going to sight this somewhere, I'm not quite sure yet. It may not even be screwed on. I might just um, put it underneath as I've done with this fuse box here, just put it underneath there. And then this unit needs to be round the back of the frame. So I'm just going to put that through now, making sure that it's not binding against anything, which is fine. There is a cable above that, and I think I'm going to cable tie it to that when I've got a minute. But now you can see that that's come through to the other side here. So, with the bracket, which we have here, I can now take the plug, which is again a standard BMW plug, and whichever way it needs to go, the other way, which is always the way with me, that then simply plugs in until it positively clicks. So that's now into place, like so. Um, we're now gonna put this through. One of the things I would say is, although I haven't quite got that straight yet, there certainly isn't many threads for this to go in, but then at the end of the day, it's not really holding anything. It's only a location of the electronics tray and then holding this bracket. So we'll tighten that down. Actually, it's, it's gone quite a bit more than I thought. And again, we're into plastic, so you don't want to squeeze it too much. And there we are, that's a, that's a very good fitted bracket with a little unit here. Now we'll continue connecting the battery. Here. So here's the fuse box for the new unit. There's the fuse box for, I think that's the, uh, the uh, CAN Smart system that I put in. Um, but they're all sort of pointing in the right direction. The important thing is that you get the battery far enough in and that your negative has gone inside the sleeve. Otherwise, you won't be able to lift the battery any to be able to get the 
peg that's on the bottom of the cover into place. So I've sort of made sure all that's true. Side pins in, like so. And there we are with the battery back in place. So now all I need to do is just make sure that all of these cables are retained and all I should do is just make a bundle of them like so and pull the retaining rubber over the top. Doesn't need much else. Get that out of the way, like so. So I find that nice and neat and tidy. So do that up. And there we have it. So all fitted, job done. The only thing I'm going to do now is just put a cable tie to hold my cable here up against one of the other cables so it holds it out of the way of the suspension and units. So there we have it, a DIN socket permanently powered with a 10 amp fuse into which I can plug obviously my battery charger which is the predominant use for it. I shall have to convert my battery charger from CAN bus unit to standard unit which is switchable on the uh, Optimate 4. I'm not sure whether this works with the CAN bus or whether I might need to get a standard USB socket but this is my old right angle socket which obviously would fit in there and would be able, if you like, to power a rear GoPro or something similar. So that's it, that's the unit, pointing backwards. So I think probably with all the uh, mud sling and everything else I've got there, it's pretty well protected there from, from water spray, but it's standard BMW fitment, and absolutely no trouble in fitting either of them. So if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. Any comments are always more than welcome. And if you feel like this channel's of interest to you or it gives you some benefit, then perhaps you'd consider subscribing as well. So that'd be fantastic. Other than that, we'll see you next time and stay safe. Bye.